Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm out on a walk with Betsy and I've decided just to come out with a camera. Uh, it's been up rain forecast in a couple of hours so I'm hoping I'm going to beat it. We have got a fair amount of cloud, it's just still really bright so I'm hoping that the flat light in this woodland area is going to look absolutely fantastic. Join me shortly and we'll get up into the trees and there's a couple of compositions I want and I'm going to show you how to improve your compositions dead easily. Join me shortly. Today's little exercise is going to be to show you how to improve your compositions the easy way and whereas most people have got 16 to 35 mil lenses 24 to 70 today I've got the Canon 5D and the 24 to 70 f2.8 and it's easy to just set up a 24 mil to try and get everything in and today I'm going to show you something different to get round the big wide big scene that looks more like a snapshot and try and get a little bit closer to things by zooming in and the images will go from looking like snapshots to looking like proper images uh, keep watching and I'm going to find the first composition which is just round the corner here and I'll talk you through what I'm doing so my first shot is going to be this little path just running through all the greenery it is really green still and you can just make out in the distance the path going off up the hill let me show you the back of the camera and i'll talk you through how to improve your composition with this shot as you can see we've got a lot of sky which is just gray and boring let's turn the camera back on um, you have got a big massive scene with a lot of white and your eyes will go straight to this white so the easiest way to improve this composition is just zoom in there is a path coming off just up the distance there just past where Betsy Betsy is standing up on a rock again or this big big log big log it is um, just posing she loves jumping up on things so just by just zooming in I'm not quite going to go to 70mm as you can see we have just got there bits of white which I want to cut out which are distracting in the scene there's a little tiny bit there which I'm not bothered about I'm just clown a bit of greenery on that but they've got some beautiful light coming in lighting up there there and that tree there and in the corner so I'm literally just going to do a single shot I'm just going to focus there I'm going to open the aperture to f11 I'm going to get Betsy out of the shot Betsy come here Betsy come here get your tail out and focus there and I am just going to take this shot as a single shot and as you can see now it's really pleasing what I'll do I'll just zoom out and I'll take this shot I'll refocus there and as you can see there is too much brightness and you do get you always go straight to that white first which spoils the image so if you want to improve your compositions cut the sky out when it's just grey you will also bring out the beautiful lighting everywhere just a little bit of dodge and burn and it will look absolutely fantastic so what do you think do you include all the sky in your photographs especially when it's just grey or white um, the thing to remember your eyes will naturally go for the brightest part of the scene so what you want is the viewers to see what you want them to see so make if you could by zooming in on that photograph um, you could see the beautiful light coming through reflected off the green 
I don't know if it's heather or what in here. It's it's, it's absolutely plastic. It's, it's beautiful. It is. But you always will go straight there rather than into the white of the sky. Um, I'm just going to turn you around. There's another little shot here. I could do the same. We am pointing uphill, so you're going to get the sky in. Um, but again, if you zoom in, it's just the same as cropping in on your on your laptop on on Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, but if you can do it in camera and you cut that sky out, you've got more detail in the image rather than cropping half of it out. It is a great little technique. Just rather than shoot wide open at 24 mil, as I've got on today, try opening out between 50 and 70 mil, and you will find absolutely beautiful shots to be had everywhere. I'm just looking around. There's, there's, there's shots everywhere now. If I was to shoot back this way. As you can see, because we're going downhill slightly, uh, there isn't much sky in the image. You can get images quite easy at sort of 24, 35 mil, 40 mil, no problem whatsoever. But if you have got a subject in there, again, try and zoom in a bit towards your subject and bring it closer to your viewer's eye, and the image will look so much better just by zooming in that little tiny bit. The next little shot is along this beautiful little path just here. Um, I'm going to try and line up. I want I want to tell the story of the, the the path coming in from the left hand side of the frame. You've got the edge rows each side of the path lining up, and again there is some white in the sky. There's a lot of green canopy, but there are branches coming over and leading the path straight up into the distance. Um, I'll show you the back of the camera again. And I will start off at 24 mil, and we'll zoom in and see where we get and what kind of focal length we're using for the best possible shot that we can get of this scene here. It looks absolutely stunning. Um, so I'm quite hopeful this will look a pretty little scene. Let me just show you the back of the camera. So for the next little shot, again you've got a lot of wise. If we zoom out, we're starting off 24 mil. We've got Betsy's backside in the shot as well. And what I'm going to do now is just zoom in. As you can see, I want the path coming in from the left. At the moment, the path is right underneath the camera. So I'm going to zoom in. Let's zoom into 70 mil. We've now got the path. We've lost some of the separation with this, with the path. And we've lost the canopy at the top of the path. So I'm now going to just zoom out slightly. Let's put the camera back on. And what I want is, I want this little bit of separation just between the path and this little bush here. But I don't want too much green in the top of the image. Plus I also want to bring it towards the camera, if I can, towards the viewer's eye. So I'm going to zoom in, which there is pretty much 50, 55 mil. You can just see the, the tunnel effect going off into the distance there. That back out. Uh, so the, the story is the path is coming through and heading off into the distance. I'm going to do a single shot, I'm going to focus literally on the bush there. Two second timers on, ISO 100, F11. I'm just a little tiny bit underexposed because it is, again, although it's cloudy, it is really bright. And as you can see, some really bright bits on top of the uh, the greenery it looks amazing let's take the shot if it turns out any good here it is see just by zooming in you can create a completely different image to what you're looking at with your eyes um, if you do come out with a zoom lens something like 24 to 70 for instance start off at your 
smallest end, 24 mil, and then just slowly zoom in. You may have to adjust your composition slightly, uh, just move this tripod around a little bit, but you will find beautiful little shots and you can just isolate little scenes rather than get a massive, try and get the old image, the old shot, or the old scene in one shot, rather than try that, just zoom in on more intimate parts of the scene and you will find your images will go to another level it's they look so much nicer the main thing cut out the sky if you have these wide bits in the in the through the trees either clone them out in photoshop or zoom in or crop them in or crop them out um, and your images will look so much better try to direct your viewer's eye to where you want it to go and if you can tell a story with a path you know where the path comes in try and get it up to corner bottom left bottom right and then lead through the scene um, you are asking the viewer to follow the path and they'll spend more time studying the photograph and they'll like it even better another really beautiful little scene I love this silver birch here um, especially the way the left hand side is just leaning over so I'm going to try and line a shot up with this. I've been walking around just looking at it and I don't really want, I think it's a rowan tree next to it. Um, I don't really want that in the shot. So I am going to have to try and be a little bit clever and leave that just out and just get this, these, these two silver birch branches. There is another silver birch straight behind it and I think with this again I'm going to probably zoom in because I don't want none of this sky none of this white stuff in the in the image and I may also shoot this as a bigger aperture so let's say f2.8 I may go wild and go f2.8 um, just to try to get the silver birch in front of me sharp and because it is so busy behind with all the branches and all the trees and the green I'm going to try and just blur that out slightly just to take your eye away from that and bring your eye again to what I want you to see which is this beautiful silver birch tree just there I may even take two images because we have got two different planes of focus with this so I may take an image first image on this the limb to the right the second one there and Hopefully it's f2.8, it will just blur the background slightly just to try and get that little bit of separation so you do, you do see these beautiful limbs clearer. Let me show you the back of the camera and I'll talk you through what I'm doing. For this I'm going to shoot this as a vertical simply because I want to try and just get this limb and this limb in. As you can see we've got trees to the left and that I think it's a rowan tree to the right and a lot of sky. So again I am just going to zoom in just to get rid of the sky first so I don't want that in the, in the image. We've now still got a little bit of this rowan tree so I'm going to zoom just a fractionally more just there. So now what we have is the two limbs that I want this one and this one we have got that one in the background which I'm not bothered about um, the image is going to be these two here. I'd Take a quick shot on this one focused in here and let's see if the background's blurring it is a little bit and I am now going to take another one on this limb just to try and get we have got two separate planes of focus here and being so narrow with f2.8 one of them may just be going soft I want them both sharp but as you can see the greenery behind is blurring out beautiful and I think it's a little bit of dodge and burn on these two limbs and your eye will go straight to them. Again I'll put it on for you now and tell me your thoughts on this image. Drop me a comment below.
this was the old kissing tree up at Abbey Valley. Um, as you can see, one part of it has now broke off, so you can still just make out where the two trees, well, the two limbs are just kissing. It did look amazing. I have photographed this um, a couple of times in the past. It's on different videos. It looked absolutely amazing. It did, but uh, unfortunately, it's since it's rotting away, and yeah things do decay and leave us so it is good to photograph things because in even just a few years time all this may just change completely and look totally different and it is nice to see the changes that you get looks amazing in here i'll just turn you around just turn you around for a second just look at these gnarly little trees here again another beautiful little scene i'll turn you back this way and we have again a beautiful path running through there's some fantastic texture and shapes in this tree try to incorporate little things like this you have the bench you can see the dark areas of the path where people have trodden it looks amazing there is one more shot i want which is down off this hill so join me shortly and we'll be down there and yeah i don't know if it's going to work out just look at this i've tried to photograph this tree and there's another one just here just there I've tried to photograph them loads of times and i just can't get an image to work for me um i keep hoping for fog and every time it's foggy i come up here and there's no fog i think these would look really spooky especially this one looks looks incredible it would look amazing with a bit of fog around it just to isolate all the background but alas it's never worked so one day um i may get it again look at these silver birch there are images to be had absolutely everywhere anyway i'm going to drop down the, down off this hill and we'll launch something up down at the bottom i can feel rain coming through the trees now as well so i think we're going to be short-lived so let's crack on and get the next shot and we can call it a day after that i just love silver birch trees i love the dark on them and the white in the bark it looks absolutely beautiful it does and especially when they break off and they form shapes beautiful again i'll talk you through the back of the camera for this shot um, it is quite bright down here because you've got a lot of reflection on the sand so I might have to try and cut a bit of that out um, because again you're always going to go over this way but as I want you to be looking through there so I took it through the back of the camera but I may actually alter this shot in a moment just to see what I can do better with it so as you can see with this shot we have got a big white blob right in the center of the screen there and we've got a lot of light just down there so again just by zooming in the the subjects are going to be the two trees there and there i want to try to just get rid of the, this lump of white just at the top of the screen i think i'm gonna have to get a little bit of it in there a little bit there which I can clone a bit of leaf over just to avoid that we have got the brightness on the silver birch to match the brightness down there and the plan is to try and let your eyes come to this part of the scene first and then come through to the rest of it looks a pretty little shot um, again I'm shooting f11 because I want the detail to be in this I am going to focus on this tree here In fact, I'm going to zoom in just to make sure I have got focus. Yep. The two second timer is on. And I'll put this on for you at the end of the video. So the rain is early. It's just starting to come down now. I've got about a 10 minute walk to the car. 
So I'm going to walk down, there's a little bench just down there I can use to just rest all my gear on, just to put it, pack it all away. And hopefully get down to the car before it starts coming too heavy to get wet. Uh, check out the links below in the description. There's links to the cameras and lenses that I use. There's also a link to my sister and brother-in-law's guest house on the Isle of Mull. If anyone fancies a trip to the Isle of Mull for some wildlife, it's a fantastic place. The annex I've got there is it's self-catering, it's, in, it's incredible, it's beautiful, it is, you will love it. Um, please subscribe, we'll do it all again next week. Here are all the photographs, I'm going to have to rush now because it's starting to come a little bit heavier. Here's the photographs, enjoy them and till next time, take it easy.